more of that to come um, in part three. Uh, if you're listening uh, live, yeah, we'll jump straight onto that. If you listen to the podcast right now, you've got me, uh, me speaking to Maria Regal uh, this morning about Hillsborough Law. And it is John Gibbons for Tour Live now. I'm delighted to be joined over Zoom uh, by the MP Maria Eagle. In fact, my MP here in Garston, uh, Maria. Thanks so much for coming on today. Always glad to meet constituents. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the bins, don't worry. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, much more important things today, uh, which is uh, Hillsborough Law. And um, you've been on uh, the Amphibia to talk about Hillsborough Law before. You've spoken to Neil, but I think it's it's worth just talking a little bit around uh, the law itself or the proposed law itself before we sort of get on to what, what, what is happening today. And because lots of us will have watched Anne this week, and it is a reminder, if needed, um, about... How difficult it is for ordinary people to to challenge the establishment, if you like, and even if you have people like yourself uh, within Parliament who've who've long fought uh, for people like Anne, it's still so so difficult for people um, for ordinary people, if you like, to to find out the truth and to go up against um, such powerful organisations. Yeah, it is difficult, and and when you get public disasters like Hillsborough, and there've been in many since. In, in the 32 and a half years since. Um, and they they do happen occasionally. And no matter how much you try and stop them, you can't stop every disaster from happening. And people get caught up in them through no fault of their own, uh, family, bereaved families at the worst moment in your life, to then have what, what the Hillsborough families had done to them, of, of official lies and denials and campaigns to bl- shift the blame onto the victims and the survivors. There are. It, it's unbelievably bad, and we've got to be able to put a stop to it. For the families, you know, within four months of the disaster, Taylor had said it was a loss of police control was the main cause of the disaster. It was their fault, and they'd behaved badly uh, in the way they put their um, case to the inquiry, and they've just carried on doing it for three decades to to the great agony and pain of survivors and families and family members of of those who died. And we can't allow it to carry on. And so there's a number of proposals we're going to be talking about today. Um, One that I've I've been pressing in the House of Commons, Michael Wills' bill, uh, uh, the public advocate bill, that would give agency to families. It would say, look, you decide whether the public advocate gets involved collectively, because families often feel powerless. So it puts them at the centre of things and gives them some power. But also um, it, it creates a Hillsborough independent panel kind of process at a much earlier stage with the aim of torpedoing cover-ups. Um, just get all the documents out at a much earlier stage. It's not going to be half a million. If it takes you 23 years, it's going to be half a million documents. If you do it at a much earlier stage, not only do you torpedo cover-ups from the start, so organisations can't get away with organising cover-ups, but also um, it makes it a much easier task, saves millions of pounds of public money, uh, uh, investigating for decades things that should have been sorted many years before. So that's an important element with public disasters. Um, but there are also other things like the, the charge for bereaved families that the uh, Bishop of Liverpool, James Jones, has been pressing for. Um, that is a guarantee of proper behaviour towards those who are bereaved by public disasters, binding on all public bodies. Then the statutory duty of candour um, to make the, there be more consequences for those in public authorities like police who lie repeatedly. Um, but also proper participation of bereaved um, people at inquests um, at some kind of equality of arms it's known as in the law so that you know perhaps um, a rule that stops public authorities using all their public money to defend themselves when families have got to raise money themselves to to be to be um, to take part in proceedings and of course inquests don't you don't have legal aid at, at present generally speaking um, so some kind of equality of, of arms. And you put all those, th- those things together and there are a few other ideas floating around as well. You've got a solid change in the law that would stop the kind of things that have happened to the Hillsborough families from ever happening again to any other families who are bereaved in public disasters. And it, it levels things up. It gives people a chance uh, to, to, to not be, have, have, 
to not be ignored and, and, and have their lives trashed by, by public authorities being defensive and lying. Uh, it's tremendously important, I think, the, the these rule changes. Absolutely, because it's the, it's it's the lying that has, has caused sort of so much hurt, and I've I've obviously there's been a lot of reaction to Anne, and and I've been reading a lot online, and people, um, you know, survivors, people who've lost families, and um, what they've said is that you know obviously the, there's the grief, there's the initial grief of losing someone, a friend, a family member that that happens, or being involved in such a disaster. But what actually, what actually the real thing that's really hurt them so much is is the lies, is is the cover up, and also having to fight it for yeah. so long, for so, and, and sort of losing so much of, of their own lives to this. And I noticed um, you shared on your Twitter yesterday um, talking in Parliament in 1998, and it's almost kind of unbelievable that you, know, you talk about what what Taylor said or what Taylor knew sort of all those years ago, but you're there in Parliament in 1988 uh, with, with what you found and what, and what you've helped sort of uncover really. And it's all, almost unbelievable to think that, you know, that, that they're still having these, these, this, this discussion so, so you know, 23, 24 years on. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the only reason I was able to make that speech and that was, you know, within a year of my being elected and this may I'll have been an MP for 25 years. You know, so that was that was it was a long time ago, and I was able to make that speech because Jack Straw ordered the boxes of statements from the South Yorkshire Police to be put into the House of Commons Library, and I went and read them all, and they were they were in a mess. There's twelve boxes of them, but I was able to make, and I only had ten or twelve minutes. The speeches were limited, um, and so I couldn't set it out all in 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 close detail. But I was able to to get across in that speech what what had been going on and just what the cover-up was and how organized it was you know there was lots of anecdotal evidence before then people would tell you uh what had gone on and the families at well, the other end of it knew what had gone on mm. but there was no evidence of it in quite that way until those boxes of documents were put in the library and i think that's that's enabled me to make that speech um and i think that's that's why freedom of information and shining a light, lifting the stone up with a torch and shining the light into the darkest recesses of the behavior of people like the South Yorkshire Police, that is a key to stopping, you know, torpedoing these cover-ups at an early stage, I think. And if the families in, in bereaved families in public disaster in future have a chance to decide themselves that that's what they want to have done, then I think it keeps any investigations totally on the straight and narrow, stops public authorities behaving in the way in which the South Yorkshire Police and West Midlands Police did in this case. And it means that families won't have to face repeatedly having to, and this is the thing, repeatedly having to say, no, Lord Justice Taylor said it was a failure of police control. No, it wasn't the fans. No, it wasn't my loved one who I have lost and am mourning. No, it was you. And the fact that the families have repeatedly had to defend the reputations of their lost loved ones and the survivors over almost three decades, that is what has got to be stopped. And that is why a change in the law is necessary. It isn't just a nice little add on. It's necessary because these things are still going wrong, perhaps not as badly and over as long a period of time as has happened with Hillsborough. But you can see the same trends. Look at what's happening with Grenfell. Uh, yeah, you can course. see the same trends happening in other disasters. Mm. So this change in public policy is necessary. And now that Hillsborough, mm. all the legal actions are finished, all the potential prosecutions have been dropped and or have failed. Now is the time to do it. And so we must press the government. And you know, there's some cross-party support for this as well, I think, in, in the Commons. And I just think this isn't a party political thing. We should be doing this because it will stop disasters going even. It's bad enough to be bereaved in a disaster, suddenly to lose somebody in some awful public disaster like that. But to then have to fight like these families had, have had to do over so long. And I think the doc I think Anne showed very well the toll that it takes on families and on individuals. Um, Absolutely. You know, that has got to be stopped and we can stop it. These measures that we're proposing at the rally today will put a stop to this kind of thing happening. And I think will be, you know, a tribute to the campaign of the families, um, which has been so 
I mean, so persistent. I mean, most people would have stopped years ago and given up, but I, I think that for all the fact that they haven't had accountability, the campaign that they've waged has been remarkable. Of course, no, absolutely, absolutely. We all sort of echo that. Um, you mentioned there the, the, the event today. Uh, if you could tell us all a little bit more about what's going on this afternoon. Well, it's a rally for a Hillsborough Law now, um, and the, the, there'll be many people participating. Um, uh, myself, Andy Burnham, Steve Rotherham, people who over the years in Parliament have raised these issues, families, bereaved families in respect of the Hillsborough tragedy, but also in respect of some other events. I know that there'll be people from the Manchester Arena bombings who will be speaking and other, other cases, and also some... Um, uh, a couple of former prime ministers, I think, will also be um, having something to say. I think um, people like Kenny Dalgleish are going to be speaking. And so it's going to be a very broad range of people who have an understanding of disasters and of what goes wrong, who either because they've unfortunately had been, you know, had experienced one in their lives or their family members have, have um, or like me, we've campaigned for many years on behalf of constituents. And, and I think it will be a very powerful call and one I hope that the government will heed and won't be able to ignore. I know that those of us who are still in Parliament won't let them ignore it. No, I mean, that's fantastic to hear it and quite right too. So if, if other people are listening to this, um, and you maybe obviously can't attend the rally today or, or want to support this law, but are unsure how can they do it? What's the best way for, for ordinary people? Because that's what this is all about, um, to sort of get behind you and the other people who are pushing for this. Well, I think contact your MP and ask your MP to support the Hillsborough law. I think um, anything like that is always good because we need to get a we need to get some momentum going in Parliament. The, the government are considering their response to Bishop James Jones's 2017 report on the lessons to be learned from Hillsborough. And um, they will be having to respond to that um, uh, soon. I mean, uh, in the next few months at the latest, uh, it's already been four years. One of the things they could say is that they will do the Hillsborough law. Um, that ought to be an outcome of that consideration. So now is a vital time. Now is a time when the government are considering what to do. And so the more pressure we can put on them, the better. So sign